Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in English, straight from Valencia in Spain, where we have comfortable 20 degrees Celsius. Behind me you see the racetrack Ricardo Tomo, a motorbike racetrack 20 kilometers from Valencia. But we are not here to drive bikes today, we are here to introduce a real pocket rocket. That is the new Polo GTI. Going back in history, we kind of celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Polo next year. It was released in 1975. By the way, I grew up in a Volkswagen Polo. Um, while there was a GT version from the first release of the Polo, Volkswagen claims the start of the GTI, of the real pocket rocket, in 1994 with the Polo G40. Uh, by now we are talking about the fifth generation of the Polo and this is a facelift of the fifth gen generation. And while we had uh, in the previous model a 1.4 liter gasoline engine with 180 horsepower, now we have even more power. Pocket rocket, pocket rocket, pocket rocket. How much horsepower does a pocket rocket really need? Well, this is a super mini car, so maybe 150 would be enough. This baby has a 1.8 liter turbo engine and it is good for 192 horsepower. We have a maximum torque of 320 newton meters at least if you know how to drive a stick shift. Otherwise if you take the DSG automatic transmission it's good for 250 newton meters. Let me get the pocket rocket Volkswagen Polo GTI effects out of my way. Top speed 236 kilometers per hour equals 147 miles per hour. Acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour slash 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 6.7 seconds. Just to give you an idea, the weight is about 1.3 tons, so it's not too heavy. But for a tiny car like this, it's kind of heavy too. Uh, Volkswagen claims that the fuel consumption is about 42 miles per gallon, which means that you need 5.6 liters on 100 kilometers. The basis price of our model, and you know here in Germany you have a basis price and you put all the options on, so the basis price for the Volkswagen Polo GTI was as a five door with DSG is about 23,750 euros. GTI stands for Grand Turismo Injection and is actually uh, used for the Volkswagen Golf or maybe Golf uh, Volkswagen Rabbit. But when they introduced the uh, Volkswagen Polo GTI, they kept one thing. GTI is always red and so you see in the face of the Polo GTI as well a red line starting in the headlights going all the way to the other side ending in the other headlight. By the way the lights you can get now as an option at least as full LED which gives you an even better light. And besides that, we are talking about a facelift, so of course they did something with the whole front, they sharpened it a little bit to make it look more sporty, more aggressive. So all stuff, you know, like they always do. Anyhow, I think the front looks okay, looks sporty, and the red stripe does the car really good. And of course, you want to have the GT I badge in the front as well. With a facelift of the Polo 5, uh, they made the car a little bit more edgy, you know, the normal trend, edgy, 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 scratchy, edgy. So you have a shadow line that goes from the front to the back, and down here is a second um, shadow line. Special about the GTI version is a side skirt that stands out just a tiny bit, tiny car, tiny bit of sky side skirt. We have 17 inch alloy wheels in the front and in the back and what I like is they put the red on the brakes as well 
so that's neat and of course the GTI badge comes on the side as well so overall we have uh, the five door version here because we are family fathers and we always try to look for family cars but you can get it as a two door or three door version as well in this case the front door goes a little bit farther to the back and you have more space to get in so baby got back well yeah it has a back of course we have a tiny spoiler on the top and um, well, the most aggressive part from the whole bag, at least from my taste, is a double exhaust system. And um, I, I would like to tell you, it looks better than it really sounds, but later more to this. What I really like about the current Volkswagen models is that they integrate the opener for the back door in the badge. That's pretty sexy. And of course, we are driving the GTI version and people should know it while we overtake them so it's on the back as well. The rear lights look a little bit LED alike but they are not. Still they look pretty sexy especially in the dark. Before I jump in and show you around the inside I would like to mention the color. It's not only a straight white it's called oxy white and it has a special glimpse that really suits the car pretty well. Okay, let's open the door, which opens pretty wide, and even if it's a tiny car, I can sit in here pretty easily, very comfortable, and reach and close the door with ease. So, sitting inside the pocket, rocket, I like this word, even so it makes no sense, I guess. Um, is it spacious? It's a tiny car, so of course we don't have a spacious feeling. The passenger seat is pretty narrow next to me. However, if I look in the front, it's okay. I don't feel too tightened up. I have plenty of headspace and I think even taller persons, I'm a 5'11", should sit in here all right. I think up to 6'2", six, six, maybe. Um, the material, we're talking about Volkswagen, and Volkswagen is trying to be premium, even they have with Audi a premium brand, but they're improving the materials in their car more and more. So the whole front, the whole dashboard is made of soft touch, which feels good, leather would be actually nicer. Uh, we have normal stuff here in the door panels that feel all right but then we have we do have lots of plastic here as well hard plastic we have like glossy black paint here which i really don't like it's such a trend nowadays but on the other hand you see every fingerprint and every dust on there so that's not really my favorite um talking about usability um the whole center console is facing me just a little bit, but at least a little bit. So I have everything good in reach and the steering wheel and everything just feels all right. So no problem about usability. Everything is in place, I guess. And if you're used to Volkswagen, you find everything on the right spot. Um, if I want to buckle up. I have plenty of uh, belt here and I can even uh, adjust the height of the belt on my shoulder which I think is really nice and uh, most sporty cars don't have this I don't know why but the Volkswagen Polo GTE comes with it the seats are pretty comfortable on one hand and still a little bit sporty I do have good side support the sides are not too soft uh, we were driving yesterday in the countryside and I can, uh, yeah, I can say they uh, give you a good hold in the seat and even the seat cushions, uh, you have a little thing here that supports you sidewise. And uh, we've driven yesterday, I think one or two hours and I, I'm an old guy, you know, I have problems with my back, it's always hurting in bad seats and I didn't have too much problems yesterday, actually I didn't have any problems with my back yesterday so I'm claiming the seats are pretty good and even good for long uh, cruises, long drives. You have to adjust the seats manually here 
which is okay. You can pump them up and down, you know, do all the stuff. And um, for the comfort thing, we have uh, um, heating for the seats with uh, two different options. They don't get like really hot. You know, I'm a Mercedes uh, fanboy, and what I really like about Mercedes Benz is that once you turn on the heating for the seat, it really burns your back. And this uh, right here in the Volkswagen, it's it's warm, it's almost hot, but it's not like really burning in the uh, highest uh, option position. The steering wheel is um, coated with leather and has like red stitchings. Um, which looks pretty sexy. It's flattened on the button. It has a GTI badge here and the Volkswagen badge in the center. You can adjust it manually and I think it's just all right. It could come out a little bit more for my taste, but um, it feels pretty much all right. Um, you have on the left side everything concerning uh, the cruise control. And on the right side, all the buttons to navigate through uh, the infotainment system on one hand and through the board computer on the other hand, everything on the right side. Uh, besides that, um, we're driving the DSG automatic transmission, so we have shifting pedals, little plates behind uh, here that are easy to reach, so its usability is good but it's plastic so it doesn't really feel great and uh, honestly if I'm driving a sporty car why in the world are they not doing anything like alloy or you know some metal stuff that just feels right when you push it yeah um, talking about a pocket rocket a small car um, if I look in the rear mirrors, the left and right, they're pretty tiny, but I see enough. I see everything that goes on behind me, and I have this rear mirror right here that shows me uh, the whole uh, rear window, and all the three mirrors give me a good idea what's going on in the back, and especially as the car ends with a rear mirror, uh, I can park or ride too. Um, Doing the shoulder thing uh, on the left side, it's a little bit disturbing, the white B thing. And on the right side, well in the back, the C is pretty big, but it's still all right. I don't know. Um, it didn't disturb me too much in traffic today. And here in Valencia, traffic inside the city is pretty wild but it could be better so uh, as an option you can get a rear camera that has a good sharp picture and even shows you the lines where you're driving so if you're uncomfortable especially with parking you might want to think about getting the rear camera uh, behind the steering wheel we have the two round gauges um, on the left side we have the rpm meter going up to 8000 rpms the red thing starts at 6000 rpms and there's a little round thing for the uh, oil temperature on the right side we have the speedometer going up to 280 kilometers per hour we all know the car just drives 236 so that's a little bit ambitious and we have uh, the gas control as well embedded in the round thing uh, between the two round gauges we have a little monochrome display for the board computer showing you a whole bunch of stuff what i don't understand and I really have to uh, ask the, the Fox One guys in a minute. I don't get the uh, speed put up there in this display. You know, I really like to have the digital speed so I don't have to, you know, look in the round gauge. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, overall, the gauges are very clear. Even at night, you can read them very well. Same with the navigation display. It might be a little bit small, but hey, pocket rocket, small car, so that's okay. We have a sensor, so whenever you come close to the displays with your hands, there's a sub-menu popping up, and otherwise, if you don't touch it, you have more uh, that you can see from the map right now. Um, and as I told you before, it's facing me just a little bit, so that helps reading the thing and you don't have to look too much down 
No, that's okay. Of course, we don't have a header display, by the way. Um, besides that, we have a little bit ambient light, sort of like. We have some lights uh, hidden in, in the foot compartment and I think here in the middle. Not too strong and you can't change the color or anything. We have a horn in the middle. Oh, I have to turn on the ignition. Sounds like this. So uh, once you drive fast in the city and you need some more space, here's the horn and it works all right. Let me uh, look through the car in sort of or in, in, in the matter of compartments. In the door panels, we have enough space to place a liter bottle and even some more space behind. Well, here for some candy at least. Yeah, it's not too much space, but it's just all right. Going up, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And here we have two cup holders. They don't have anything to fix the bottles, so once you have smaller bottles, this is half a liter of water. Um, it's shaking around in the car. For this bottle, the size is just all right. In front of the two cup holders, you have uh, an aux in, you have a 12 volt outlet and a USB port, uh, which makes sense because right behind those three um, outlets, you have another compartment, a tiny one, where you can store your uh, smartphone and just hook it up with the USB. What I think it's kind of sad, I have an iPhone 5, so that's not like really state of the art as the iPhone 6 is out already. And hooking it up via USB, it was not able to play my music or it said, uh, I don't recognize your phone or your USB device. Kind of sad. Um, behind the uh, stick for the manual transmission, we have another little compartment. And next to the handbrake, and hey boys, we have a real handbrake. So cornering in wintertime is a little bit more fun with this thing. There's another compartment left and right to the brake. And we have, at least as an option, a look, an iPhone 6 Plus is fitting in here. We have an armrest with a little compartment in there and you can adjust. Oops. Well, once you put down the thing, you can adjust the armrest just a little bit. So that's pretty neat. Oops. Yeah. Um... Then we have a gloves compartment, of course, like in every car. And this is kind of unusual pocket rocket small car, but huge gloves compartment. Here you have a um, place where you can put your shades even. And uh, yeah, that's plenty of space. And besides that, there's even the slot in for the DVDs or CDs. We have sunshades with makeup mirrors in both sides and they are well illuminated is, is just a little bit too much. You have a little light there. Same with the reading lights for the driver and the passengers. They are not too bright but at least they are there. And with this uh, you can put on the whole lightning like for entry and going out. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it from the front. Um, we have handles, by the way, on all four doors, which is good if you're driving wild and you have your mother-in-law on the passenger seat. She can like grab the handle and feel a little bit more safe. Since we have a five-door version, let's jump in the back and uh, look how much space there is for the kids or even grown-ups. Uh, getting in is pretty easy, closing the door is even easier. Alright, pocket rocket in the back. I'm amazed I do have space. Not plenty of, but at least space. The driver's seat is put in a position that I, with my 511 180 centimeters, can sit in there just alright and very comfortable. And seeing me here on the back row, um, enough headroom, yes. Uh, it's okay with the leg room. I'm not really sitting comfortable and if I scoot down just a little bit I put my knees in the back of the driver's seat. That's not a good idea. But I think at least for two grown-ups in the back there's enough space to drive even longer distances up to 400 kilometers maybe. Would, wouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, the question is I'm driving a pocket rocket. What about my kids? Let me see. 
Yeah, the belt is long enough to buckle up child seats or baby seats. Uh, we have stiff or pretty stiff uh, locks for the belts so the kids can buckle up themselves. Um, they have a tiny compartment here in the middle, uh, in the door panel, I'm sorry, but not enough space for my bottle, so never mind. Uh, we have like little nets or bags here in the back of the seats. Um, here's a can, so you can at least store a can in there. If you want to, you have a cup holder right here in the middle, but um, it's not looking too stable and it looks like it's gonna break pretty soon if you use it. It's okay, but bottles are shaking around so it's not right, really good. Besides that, uh, we have nothing in here. We have a reading light, uh, or at least it looks like a, a might want to be a reading light for both uh, seats that you can turn on and off. Uh, we have handles, of course, and next to the handles we have little hooks uh, to put your jacket there, right here and right there. We do have power-driven windows even in the back, too bad they don't roll down the complete way. I kind of hate this if they stand up halfway or one third because you can really put your elbow anywhere in the summertime. And by the way, my kids hate it as well. Uh, anyhow, that's just the way it is. By the way, the, color, uh, the windows are colored just a little bit. And I'm doing the test if nothing can stuck in here while putting it up automatically and it's safe so your kids are safe too. All right, let's check out the trunk. Open it right here at the badge I told you. We have space in here for only 204 liters of luggage, which I think is not very much. For instance, we just drove the Mercedes AMG GT, a real sports car with just two seats, of course, but it has space for 350, so 150 liters more than this pocket rocket right here. Anyhow, at least here you can flip the seats. If I have to pick up something from the ground and lift it up in the trunk, this is a distance of 67 centimeters. That's really not a lot, so that's pretty easy handing it in. And you hardly have an edge here. It goes down just a centimeter or two, so it's easy to fill in. Uh, about the dimensions, we have a wide of about 90 centimeters. It's about 50 centimeters deep and you can fill it up up to 40 centimeters in height. Um, looking inside we have just a little light. All the lights for the inside are not very bright in this car. Uh, we have some hooks where you can, you know, buckle up sort of your bags and uh, that's pretty much it. I can lift the bottom of the trunk and I see a spare tire and the emergency kits. So uh, that's about it. Let's flip the back row. You have two ways to flip the back seat. A sloppy way, that's just you know flipping it over from the back. Or a clever way where you take the cushion from the back seat, lift it up just a little bit, turn it around and then flips the seat and you see the difference this is no plain surface but if you do it the right way you do have a plain surface by the way from the start to here you have 130 centimeters of space if you put the passenger seat to the very front it's about 150 centimeters and if you flip over both seats the right way, you have a storage room for about 882 liters. People like me, I'm 5'11", won't bang their heads. If you're taller than 6 foot, maybe 6'1", so around 190 centimeters, you, might be, uh, you should be careful with the back door. But it closes with ease. We can store up to 440 kilograms inside our Polo GTI, at least the DSG model. Uh, 75 kilos you can put on the roof even. And if you want to pull a trailer, you can install a hook and pull trailers up to 1.2 tons, at least if they have a brake. 
All right, it's time for a little driving experience in the pocket rocket. And please forgive me, I have to make some fun of the English language. I will hit the road now. Ha! No, I will really hit the road now with the pocket rocket. Let me jump inside and turn the key. And I need to buckle up, of course. And put you aside. Because, kids, it's important to buckle up, always safety first, never forget. Does your body good. This baby is a Volkswagen, Volkswagen, Polo, GTI, GTE now in the city on the Spanish highway and uh, on the countryside on country roads and uh, even more exciting I will go on track here in a little while. Um, I would like to say that the whole suspension is quite stiff, it's not too comfortable on the other hand, it's still comfortable enough to go for a longer ride without, you know, hurting your back, seriously. And um, anyhow, you have the sport button and the sport button controls um, the steering, the suspension, the reaction of the throttle and of course the uh, times of the DSG, of the automatic transmission. So everything gets a bit more sporty, so you can enjoy your drive. What is kind of disappointing to me is, of, yeah, is the exhaust system. I think the exhaust is way not loud enough. It sounds a little bit too artificial for my taste. I would rather have it a little bit more natural. I think the sound designers could put a little more effort in this, make it sound a little bit more natural, more powerful. Anyhow, in the city, this car is just pure fun. You're small, you have a small car, you have a real pocket rocket with a lot of power, so you're most likely even faster than stronger cars, more powerful cars that are heavier for one and then bigger so they have other dimension to handle. And the steering supports you in the city as well. It's a really direct steering, there's uh, nothing to complain about the steering at all. It's really handy and gives you a good feedback, everything's just cool. When it comes to acceleration, um, well we have 193 horsepower to accelerate 1.3 tons, so don't expect any miracle, but still it feels good. And especially in the city, you're always first on the traffic light, unless you have a motorbike next to you. So it's really fun to drive, and even in the countryside, with a, you know some curves around you, this car makes fun, especially steering in combination with the engine. I have nothing to complain about the automatic transmission, the TSG. I think it shifts just alright. It's just nothing to complain. It's fast, it's um, reliable and you have actually no need to really use the pedals, the shifting pedals. A tiny thing I'm really upset about are the uh, little turning lights that, I, that you see in the rear mirrors and the side mirrors because I'm so used to um, have a blind spot warner that once I put on the turning signal and I see something flashing in the mirror, I'm like, oh, it's a blind spot warner, but this car does not have a blind spot warner, so no warning, it's just a turning signal. That's kind of confusing if you switch, this, uh, switch cars a lot like I do, but if you buy this car, you get used to it, I guess, and it's no problem for you at all. Uh, I like the LED lights, by the way, uh, they give a good light. We drove home yesterday night in the dark, it's a good light. It's probably worth the uh, extra euros. And um, besides that, 
I like the infotainment system, the sound with the regular speakers is just fine, just okay. It's not, you know, it's not a boom car or anything, but it's okay for daily use, I guess. Well, uh, now a little bit of fun. Volkswagen gave us a chance to drive on the track here in Valencia. And so I hit the sport button of this car to sharpen everything. So the steering feels quite tighter. Um, so it feels as well that the DSG is working much, much smoother now and it's uh, changing the gears way faster. And uh, the sound got a little bit, just a little bit louder as well. Woohoo! Fun, fun, fun. By the way, as ugly as those shifting panels are, they work at least. Just keep in mind, once you start shifting manually, if you quit shifting manually, it puts you not back in sport, but just in regular mode. I'm starting to enjoy this stuff here. Okay, let's just not talk about fuel consumption. Uh, we have an average of 18 liters here on track now, which is <laughs> might be a little bit uh, too much. But overall, here on track, you get a feeling that this little pocket rocket is quite fun even on track. If you're looking for an affordable car that you even can have a little bit of fun on track, you might want to check out the Volkswagen Polo GTE. And back again. All right, that's it from Valencia, from the racetrack, where I had this little pocket rocket. Well, actually, another one. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this little review about the Volkswagen Polo GTI. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments and we'll try to help you out. If you haven't done so, please subscribe because we do this stuff all the time. And that's it. I say goodbye. good for maximum torque of 350 newton meters at least 120 okay for instance it has even 275 79 97 95 scheiße 275 or 275 Polo GTI G, uh, DSG and 500 uh, no 75 kilos of that you can Place on the, ich mach das nochmal von vorne.